Look what we got there, the brand new DJI Osmo Action 5 Pro. Yes, it's pro now. So if you've been watching my channel for any length of time and you've seen any of my running content where I'm out in the woods running or I'm in the mountains or running an ultra marathon or something like that, over the past year, I've pretty much exclusively been carrying the DJI Action 4. That was kind of my camera of choice because I liked the image quality and the audio quality that came out of this camera. So I was personally pretty excited to get an email from DJI to check out the new Action 5 Pro because uh, they've made a lot of improvements here and it's, it's a pretty solid action camera. There are some pros and cons, and we'll talk about that in this video. Before we move on though, I do wanna mention that this video is not sponsored. DJI did send me this camera for the purpose of this video, but honestly, an action camera isn't going to sway my opinion. I have I have lots of them. I don't I don't really need another one, but, but it was nice of them to send it over. I do wanna talk about my particular use case because I'm not somebody who's jumping out of airplanes or skydiving or snorkeling or scuba diving or doing any of the things that you typically do with an action camera. I really use these cameras mainly for running and hiking and more as an uh, adventure camera, something I just throw in my backpack or my running vest and I don't have to worry about. With that intro out of the way, let's get into the details. And first up, let's talk about the price because the new DJI Action 5 Pro has gotten more expensive than the previous Action 4. Pretty much across the board in all the different combos available, the new Action 5 Pro is about $50 more here in the USA as compared to the previous Action 4. The Action 5 Pro is now $349. So the price is currently identical to the Ace Pro. It's $50 cheaper than the GoPro and $50 more than the Action 4. The pricing topic doesn't end there though because like I said, there's a lot of combo packages available and in particular, this is my favorite combo. This is called the Advanced Adventure combo. And the cool thing about this is that not only does it come with a selfie stick if you need one, but on top of that, it also comes with three batteries. And speaking of accessories, DJI has also released this new multifunctional charging handle, which is super cool. It's got the magnetic DJI mount on the top here. And if I put my Action 5 on there, I can also plug in the camera to the selfie stick. And now my camera's charging from the selfie stick. It also has a built-in tripod, so you can put this thing on the ground. Unfortunately, I don't have pricing for the charging handle, but it's a pretty cool accessory. Let's move these accessories aside for a minute and compare the DJI Action 4 on the left to the new Action 5 Pro on the right. As you can see, in terms of size, these cameras are identical. Pretty much every angle of these cameras are identical. And because of that, the new Action 5 Pro is fully compatible with previous Action 4 accessories. Even the cage from the Action 4 I have here, I can put my Action 5 Pro in and latch it down and I'm good to go. So everything works, same form factor, same size. That is nice to see. Another observation between these two cameras that's a little bit different is the, the lens protector. So on the DJI Action 4 here, you can see they have these ribs on the lens protector to take it off and that gives you a pretty good grip. On the new Action 5 Pro, it's kind of interesting. So there's this rubber ring cover that gives you some grip to take off the lens, but that actually comes off. And if you take it off, you've got this like interesting angular look on the metal of the ring of the Action 5 Pro on the lens there. Now, if I turn both these cameras on, you're gonna notice another difference between the two and it's the little status indicator light on the Action 4 is no longer present on the Action 5 Pro. You can see that they're both recording. On the Action 4, you've got this blinking tally light, which is really useful. On the Action 5 Pro, there's no blinking light. However, on the Action 5 Pro, when you are recording, it will always display that you're recording on the front display. Even when the displays go to sleep, that front display will still have red text indicating that you're recording. So one thing before we move on, uh, if you wouldn't mind and you're finding this video helpful or fun so far, please consider going down and giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel down below because that really helps me out. And also check out the links in the description down below if you are planning on picking up an Action 5 Pro or a GoPro or any other camera I show in this video. Okay, all right, let's move on. Another difference between these two cameras is that under the hood, DJI has made a lot of changes to the chipset and the guts of these cameras. First of all, the DJI Action 5 now has Wi-Fi 6 on board, and that Wi-Fi 6 gives you much faster transfer speeds when you're offloading footage to your phone in the DJI app at up to 80 megabytes per second. Another difference on the DJI Action 5 Pro is that it got a new chipset. So the new chipset inside this camera is improved. It's now in a four nanometer infrastructure, 
which means it's faster, it's more efficient, it's more thermally performing, it's just better all around, and that has unlocked a bunch of new features on this camera, which we'll talk about in this video. And the new chipset of the Action 5 Pro also lends itself to much longer run times when it comes to battery life. The battery claims that they have with the Action 5 Pro are kind of wild. On the box here, on the back, it says up to four hours of recording. And I did go down the rabbit hole on doing a battery test and overheating test on this camera, which we'll cover later in this video. When it comes to the battery on the DJI Action 5 Pro, this is really interesting because it's the identical same form factor as the older Action 4. On the left is the Action 4 battery, on the right is the Action 5 battery, and as you can see, all of the dimensions are identical, and because of that, this new battery is also backwards compatible. I don't know what magic they did here to cram more capacity in the same form factor, but the older DJI Action 4's battery was 1,770 milliamp hours, while the new battery is 1,950 milliamp hours. So you've got a considerable bump there, but the same exact form factor. Next up, let's talk about the displays on the new DJI Action 5 Pro. Just like the Action 4, the Action 5 Pro has a dual display layout. So you've got a small display on the front and a larger display on the back. However, this time around there's been some huge improvements on the Action 5 Pro because if you look at the display size, the rear display got 16% bigger, it's got thinner bezels, and it's a much bigger display to look at. However, other than the display size, there's also another big upgrade here and it's hard to see on camera, but they're now using OLED displays in the Action 5 Pro instead of the LCD displays in the Action 4 and basically every other action camera. The DJI Action 5 Pro is the first action camera to feature OLED displays on both the front and rear display. What does that mean in practice? Well, OLED displays are incredibly color accurate. In fact, the ones used here have 100% coverage of the DCI P3 color space. That means it's a really accurate display for color reproduction. But on top of that, OLED displays are much more punchy and contrasty because the pixels can actually turn black. Unlike an LCD display where the pixels can't turn themselves off, they always have that grayish hue to them. On an OLED, they can turn true black. And generally speaking, the OLED display is also just a lot better out in the wild when you're in the sunlight, you're in the shade, and you're trying to look at the back of the camera, you get better viewing angles, it's a little bit brighter and easier to see, it's just better all around compared to an LCD display. Next up, let's talk about internal storage on the DJI Action 5 Pro, because this camera now has internal storage. You don't need to put an SD card in here, you can take it out of the box and just hit record, which is super cool. So as you can see here, this camera has 47.8 gigabytes of free space and internal storage, and that's a weird number. Number, like you can't buy an SD card with 47.8 gigabytes, but it's still a pretty sizable amount of storage. And if I go back to the main screen here, you can see that buys me one hour and 45 minutes of 10-bit 4K30 recording. That's a good amount of time for not using an SD card. Next up, let's talk about the new depth and altitude sensor. That's right, this camera is the first action camera ever to have an altitude sensor and a depth sensor. And what that means is when you go on a hike or on top of a mountain, the camera will actually record your altitude during that hike. And the same goes for scuba diving or snorkeling or whatever. This camera is waterproof, obviously, but it's now waterproof to 20 meters, so you can go even deeper than the Action 4. And if you do dive into the settings here, you can see there is a setting for depth and altitude. And if I click on that, you can see there's a diving profile, a hiking and parachuting profile, and unit of measures. So what can you do with that data after you record well, you can actually overlay the data on the video in the DJI app on your phone. Unfortunately, I haven't been hiking or parachuting or diving in the past week. I've had this camera, so I haven't been able to test it out, but I have put this camera in my dive simulation take, and I did simulate depths of up to 20 meters. It did survive. The DJI Action 5 Pro has another trick up its sleeve when it comes to data overlays, though, and it's not anything to do with the camera at all, but more with the app on your phone. Now within the DJI Mimo app on your phone, you can actually import data from your Garmin account. So if you're a Garmin user like me and you have a Phoenix eight or a forerunner or something like that, you'll be able to pull your GPS files from your watch into your video file and overlay that data in real time, which is super cool. And Garmin isn't the only source here. You can also pull in files from Apple Health and you can pull in a standard GPX file or FIT file. And that could be from any platform, from Coros to Polar to Suunto, whatever. And within the DJI Mimo app, you can overlay all kinds of information from your GPS track in the corner of the screen, a little graphic of it, your speed, your distance, your power, all of that is available. It's pretty cool. Next up, let's talk about audio and the built-in microphones on the DJI Action 5 Pro. Now we're out here with the Insta360 Ace Pro, the GoPro Hero 13 Black, 
and the new DJI Action 5 Pro. This is also a good opportunity to test out the microphones on all three of these cameras, the DJI, the Insta360, and the GoPro. Which one sounds the best? Which one's the clearest? Which one has the most full-bodied sound for my voice? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. To be honest, they sound pretty much the same as the DJI Action 4, in my opinion, but that's actually a good thing. The reason why I used the Action 4 so heavily over the past year was because I really like the way the microphone sounds without using any external accessories. But that's not the end of the story when it comes to audio on the DJI Action 5 Pro, because this is a DJI product. You do have the DJI ecosystem system and the new DJI Action Pro can now connect to the DJI Mic 2s. How many times am I going to say DJI in this video? And right now you're hearing what the DJI Mic 2 sounds like connected to the Osmo Action 5 Pro. Another benefit to the Osmo Action 5 Pro is that you can actually connect two microphones, two of these DJI Mic 2s to the Action 5 Pro. So you can imagine a situation where you're doing a podcast or something like that. You don't need any additional hardware. These pair wirelessly and I think they sound pretty good. What do you think? With audio out of the way, let's talk about the imaging sensor in the new DJI Action 5 Pro because it is the same size as the Action 4 in previous generations. However, it has been upgraded to have improved dynamic range of up to 13 and a half stops. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a scientific way to test those claims of 13 and a half stops, but I do see a difference on the Action 5 Pro compared to the Action 4 in very demanding scenes. For example, here I'm facing the sun, I've got shadows in the trees, I've got the sun shining through the trees, and as you can see on the Action 5 Pro, you can see deeper into the shadows and you can still see the blue sky behind it. The new Action 5 Pro also unlocks a couple of additional features like 4K 60 with HDR turned on. The new sensor in the Action 5 Pro also gives you the ability to take 40 megapixel stills from your action camera. Though I'd probably still use my phone for that, but at least it exists. Another difference when it comes to slow motion on the DJI Action 5 Pro is that you can actually have both displays turned on with slow motion. So if you're shooting 4K 120, you can still see that front display where on the previous generation Action 4, the front display would be disabled because it couldn't support all of that processing. Next up, let's talk about the new subject tracking mode on the Action 5 Pro. And again, this is enabled by that new chipset and faster processing. So here, if I click on my modes, you can see I've got video, super night, which we'll talk about in a minute, and subject tracking. Now, if I click in on subject tracking and I hold the camera up like this, I'm gonna try to, try to give you a preview of what's going on here but you can see that it's tracking my face. So if you wanted to make an Instagram reel or a TikTok video or something like that, you can use this mode and no matter how you move the camera, it's going to keep your face centered in the shot. Again, this is really only useful for vertical video shooting, but if you are someone making that kind of content, it's a useful feature. And when it comes to stabilization, comparing all these cameras side by side, they've all gotten so good these days where you really can't pick a winner. You could strap these to the back of a dirt bike, hitting a jump and crashing, and it's still gonna look stable. So no complaints and no surprise here. Now that we've talked about dynamic range and stabilization, let's just talk about image quality for a second here compared to the previous generation on the DJI Action 4 and the GoPro Hero 13 Black and Ace Pro. The reason why I like DJI cameras is because they have a really nice balanced look. They don't look too warm and they just kind of have a nice neutral look to them. And that's no different here on the Action 5 Pro as well. Generally speaking, I do think the DJI Action 5 Pro has a better looking image compared to the Action 4. It should, it's a newer camera. It's got a new sensor, new processing. It doesn't look as over sharpened. It's not so digitized compared to the Action 4. Now compared to these other cameras with the Insta360 Ace Pro and the GoPro, the GoPro always leans more towards a warmer color compared to these other cameras. That could be a pro or a con depending on your preference. I think it looks pretty good and pretty cinematic. The Insta360 Ace Pro matches up pretty closely to the Action 5 Pro in terms of image quality. They probably are using a very similar sensor, but this kind of goes back to what I said before where these are all really good in good lighting conditions. To be critical though, I did run into one issue on the DJI Action 5 Pro, it's not really an issue, it's just kind of like a phenomenon. In certain lighting conditions, like if you go from a really bright scene to a dark scene, or if you're holding the camera in front of you and you're heavily backlit, but the front of you is dark, the camera does something funky where it tries to balance out the highlights and shadows, and it sort of makes your face or whatever subject you're filming 
look kind of plastic. It's almost like the camera is boosting the shadows and bringing down the highlights and trying to make everything even. Keep in mind that weird highlight shadow situation only happens every now and then. It's really in very particular scenarios. For the most part, not something you'll notice. And that brings us to the next topic with the DJI Action 5 Pro, and that's low light performance. When the lights come down, how well does the Action 5 do? Well, surprisingly good. Okay, now we're doing a low light test between the DJI Osmo Action 5 Pro and the Insta360 Ace Pro, which arguably has the best low light performance of any action camera. It's not really all the way, there we go. And the quick release was not all the way on. We're in a decently well lit room. As you can see, I have one light source in here. All the lights in this room are off, but I'm gonna go ahead and move out into a darker area into the hallway here, just to see how how dark it can get before these cameras start to look awful. Right now, there is a tiny little crack of light behind me. And if I were filming this on a GoPro, I know this whole scene would be pitch black. Actually, I should probably get a GoPro to compare. Hang on. Okay, so I went and got the GoPro Hero 13 black. And now I've got all three cameras. We've got the DJI Action 5 Pro, the Insta360 Ace Pro in pure video mode and night mode on the DJI and the GoPro Hero 13 Black. And as expected, I'm looking at the screens right now, the GoPro appears to be pretty much completely black. I mean, there's a little bit of an outline of my head there. I can kind of see if I backlit myself. But on the DJI and the Ace Pro, I can see me, I can see an image. I can also see a lot of grain and noise. So if I go back into my mode selection here and I swipe over, you're gonna see a new mode for Super Night. Super Night mode is basically the same as Insta360's pure video mode, where both these cameras have a dedicated low light mode that optimize the scene for low light capabilities. And I gotta say, the new DJI Action 5 Pro in that new super night mode is really impressive. With low light performance out of the way, let's talk about overheating and battery life. This is where I really went down a rabbit hole. I have done multiple tests with the new DJI Action 5 Pro and compared it against the GoPro Hero 13 Black, the Action 4, and the Insta360 Ace Pro, and I let them run in a variety of situations to see which one would last longer, and I got some surprising results. Like I said before, on the back of the box for the Action 5 Pro, it states that you get up to four hours of runtime on a single charge with the battery. My first test I set up in this office, and it was on a very hot day with no air conditioning. This room was about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. And keep in mind, I'm indoors, there are no open windows, I don't have a fan, no air conditioning, no airflow at all, which is sort of the worst case scenario for these cameras. Another thing I did to stress the cameras even more was I kept the screens on. Whenever the screens fell asleep, I went over and I tapped on them to wake them back up, just to stress them as much as possible for a worst case scenario. And I also had all these cameras filming in the same settings, and they're all shooting 4K at 30 frames per second. The first camera to overheat in that test was the DJI Action for at one hour and 13 minutes. However, it didn't fully overheat. It went into its overheating mode, which basically turns off the display to try to save itself and record a little bit longer. So the camera continued to record for another 10 minutes or so at one hour and 24 minutes is when it completely overheated and turned off. The next camera to overheat was the GoPro Hero 13 Black. This camera overheated at one hour and 14 minutes and then turned itself off. The next camera to drop was the Insta360 Ace Pro. However, this camera did not overheat heat at all, it just died because the battery died. The Ace Pro lasted an impressive one hour and 29 minutes before the battery bit the dust. And finally was the DJI Action 5 Pro. This camera ran through its entire SD card where I had to format it quickly and hit record again, and it did not overheat, and the battery died at two hours and 20 minutes. Yeah, I can imagine if I didn't keep the screens on that the camera would probably would have filmed closer to three hours. That's really wild. And if I did drop down into like 1080p or or 720p even, that might get closer to the claimed four hours of battery life. I don't know, I'll have to do more testing. Keep in mind, your mileage may vary when it comes to battery life and overheating claims. Like, it really depends on the situation you're in. If you're out in direct sunlight, it might have been different results. Another thing to keep in mind is that these are completely unrealistic situations, and for the most part, if you're using an action camera, it's gonna be on your bike, or you're running with it, or you're hiking, or there's gonna be some air moving around it, and with any air moving around any of these cameras, none of them are gonna overheat. And that brings us to the final section of this video where I wanna talk final thoughts and conclusions about 
the new DJI Action 5 Pro. Notable features about this camera are the improved image quality, the better low light capabilities, the new OLED displays, and the same form factor as the previous version so all of your accessories and batteries are compatible with both cameras. You've also got class leading battery life and thermal performance in 4K 30p and 120p, which I did not expect, the internal storage, and that really unique depth and altitude sensor. Along with just generally improved image quality, except for that weird plasticky situation I ran into, overall the image performance from this camera is quite good. All of that for only $50 more than the previous generation and $50 less than the latest GoPro. I think, I think that's a, it's a pretty good value. So when it comes to the cameras in front of me, should you upgrade to the DJI Action 5 Pro? Well, if you have an Action 4 and you want better low light performance and slightly better image quality and the ability to pair two microphones instead of one, Yes, for $50 more, you get the Action 5 Pro and you get all of those new capabilities. If you don't need that stuff, hang on to the Action 4. Still a great camera. Should you jump from GoPro to the Action 5 Pro? Well, that's kind of a tough decision too. It's got better thermal performance, better runtime when it comes to battery life. But in good light, there's still something about the GoPro's image quality that I like. I don't know, it just comes off a little bit more natural and cinematic. Those are buzzwords, but that's just my opinion. The Action 5 Pro still has really good image quality and it's way better in low light. But in good light, that's a really tough decision. That's up to you to make. And then when it comes to the Insta360 Ace Pro compared to the Action 5 Pro, that's a really tough one because at the time of filming this video, these two cameras are the same amount of money. On the Ace Pro, you do get that unique flip out LCD on the back so you can see yourself on a much bigger screen, but it is one extra step you have to make every time you use the camera. I actually prefer the built-in screen on the front of the Action 5 Pro. Generally speaking, the image quality between these two cameras is also very similar, even in low light capabilities. The Ace Pro and the Action 5 Pro look pretty similar there as well. Just kind of depends on what ecosystem you're in and what features you find important. Do you need the depth gauge? Do you need the altitude gauge? That's really up to you to decide. At the end of the day though, the DJI Action 5 Pro is an impressive camera with lots of upgrades over the previous generation at a reasonable price. So if you're looking for an action camera, this should be up there on your list of ones to check out. And with that, we have reached the end of this video. And if you're still watching, you probably enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy it, please consider dropping down and giving me the thumbs up and subscribe down below. That really helps me out. It helps this channel grow. And after you do that, also check out the links in the description down below where you can head over and pick up your very own DJI Action 5 Pro, GoPro, Insta360, whatever. I'll have them all linked down below as well. And after you're done shopping down there, also check out all of my other social media accounts like my Instagram, my threads, my Strava, and my website where you can pick up a sweet shirt like this. Yeah, you should get one. That's it for this one. I gotta go now and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time, okay? Bye.